McCluskey, and I'm here to assist with this session today. Please make sure that your name appears in your tile. Um, so right now, the only names that I see, I know that we have Jacqueline Hicks and Shelby Newman and David Downs. I, I'm not sure who the other people are that are teachers. So if you guys could tell me your names. Oh, are you putting it, you're putting it in the chats, I see. Let's see, um, okay. So if you are joining by phone and your name is not visible and you can't do the chat, please take yourself off of mute and state your name. I don't wanna miss anyone because I know that you want to receive your PD credit in PLZ. And speaking of PD credit, you can apply up to nine hours during the summer PD sessions to the 2020-2021 school year. And this credit began on May 28th. We are so excited that you are here and participating and want to encourage you to continue attending the CCTE Summer PD Sessions. Enjoy your time today. If you have any specific PD questions, email Sharnell Smith. So if you guys would go ahead and tell me your names, that would be great. Marjorie Swift. Patrice Gleaton. Jacqueline Hicks. You got me, I think, David Downs. Okay, so I think one of these iPhones is me. <laughs> so I think I'm just missing maybe one person who's in here. So I have a Shelby County School employees, Patrice Gleaton, Marjorie Swift, Jacqueline Hicks, Shelby Newman, and David Downs. So I think that I'm missing at least one person. I'm only seeing one iPhone, Amanda. Yeah, okay, I, maybe only see, I only see one iPhone as well. Okay, that might just be my uh, issue because I have, I'm actually running another meeting on my computer. So I'm on this one on my phone. So it just may be um, the way that the phone setup looks. So that sounds great. Thank you guys so much for joining. And um, thank you all for hosting this excellent PD session. And I can't wait to learn with you all. Thank you. Okay, um, welcome everyone. We know that we know some of you from um, previous workshops that we've done, this being the third and final one in the series. And it's been certainly our pleasure as the National Consortium for Health Science Education to be invited by Charnel and to be a part of your professional development. We know that um, everybody's thinking summer now. And so we just applaud you for being here with us. And just a little bit about the consortium. We've been around for um, since 1991 and we bring together health science state leaders. So those folks that work at Department of Education across the nation who have a responsibility for middle, secondary and some post-secondary health science education programs. So we work with state leaders, we work with publishers and educational resource providers who create wonderful classroom resources for you and textbooks. And we also work with professional organizations who are interested in your students and the good work that goes on in your classroom. So as, a, as an organization, we have the National Health Science Standards that provide consistency for health science programs across the nation so that students who complete a program in California have mastered some of the same knowledges and skills as students who complete a program in Tennessee. One of our strategic um, priorities is to support classroom teachers. And we do that through a series of um, professional development opportunities um, like we're providing for you here um, this month and now June. 
Also, we do Wednesday webinars and those are recorded and posted on our website at healthscienceconsortium.org. So if um, we will now, by virtue of you being uh, here in our professional development um, today, we'll have your email address and you'll be a part of our database. So when those webinars crank up again in August, you'll be receiving notifications about them and they usually last about an hour and we um, share them as I said recording on our website. We also sponsor a National Health Science Conference and that's an annual event however we don't know what um, the October event that was planned for Charleston will look like given um, travel uh, restrictions that we think will be um, highly enforced for teachers for the fall but um, We'll keep you posted if that um, flips to a virtual opportunity. Maybe it'll be something that uh, some of you can join us. We did have some teachers from Shelby County with us in 2019. We were in St. Louis uh, for the um, National Health Science Conference. And that's really how we got introduced to your district and got to hear about all um, the good programs that you have going on. So we have um, three teachers. Um, they are um, very effective uh, health science teachers. Um, Katrina um, presented last Tuesday and she, her background is um, registered nurse. Um, the first week we were together, Karen Edwards presented. Her background is athletic training. And then today we have Rhonda Evett and her background is respiratory therapy. So, and my background is nursing. Again, I'm Nancy Allen. I serve as executive director for the consortium. And we um, hope you'll enjoy the next hour and 15 minutes or so. And with that, we will um, entertain questions. This is very informal. We're a small group. You can put questions in the chat. If, if it's something you just have to say, I'm sure Rhonda would um, you know, welcome your input as she goes through her presentation. And then um, we will also take questions at the end. So um, with that being said, I'll pass the mic to Rhonda. And Rhonda, thank you so much for um, all the preparation and for um, agreeing to provide this opportunity for the teachers today. Great, thanks so much, Nancy, and thanks everyone. Um, I am going to uh, talk about, mine's kind of action-packed. Um, the, first, the first part uh, that I'm gonna talk about kind of wraps up everything we've talked about with the last two as far as program development. We sent out um, a Google form earlier on when we were planning uh, and some of the biggest needs that were requested were going to be um, program development like the phlebotomy program or a medical assisting program and things of that nature. And my background, yes, is a respiratory therapist of about 30 years. I did do EMS in the beginning part of that and I um, helped develop about four major programs with different hospitals. Um, so launching stuff and then handing it off to uh, great leaders uh, is my specialty and I move on and go to something else. So um, I, I've loved teaching, uh, just wrap it up seven years of teaching high school. And through that time, one of the big barriers I, would, I ran into after the first couple of years was that um, state of South Carolina, and I'm pretty sure most states, um, will only allow a registered nurse to teach certified nursing assisting. And that presented a problem with my program because as I came in, we had, um, I was able to teach the classroom stuff. Now, I, I have some other resources that kind of make me strong in that field. And so in caring for other family members um, and other other um, like rehab facilities and things like that. I had the skills to do it and the knowledge to do it, but we also had a registered nurse that would do their clinicals and that was really kind of the, the overseer of the program. Um, I actually replaced her in this uh, school and so she stayed on to do clinicals and all that, but after two years she was unable to return. So I was faced with a lot of frustration for the, the students to get a certification and at that point um, I began to hear about the NHA certifications. So um, I can't do anything small and I'm learning, I'm learning lessons about that. But so to bring everybody um, that was coming into clinical studies, a certification of some kind, um, I decided that I wasn't going to do one of them. I was going to do all three of them. So 
the reason I chose that is because we wanted to go into a patient care technician at the time. Um, that was just going to be the greatest. But for patient care technician, you have to have this element of phlebotomy and you have to have the element of EK, EKGs as well. So uh, in my time as a respiratory therapist and as a transport uh, for neonatal and pediatric ICU, and I worked on the life flight out of Austin, Texas for a while, I did gain a certification in IVs and um, became very good at that. And so I, I feel pretty strong going into this program to teach it. And I spent my first couple of years in, you know, going through school um, as a monitor technician. So I had a really good, strong background in EKG. So I, I just thought I'd do it all. And so I want to tell you my story. And so as you get excited and as you want to just do so much, um, for the students and offer all of these things because those of us who have come from a healthcare background, we just, we, we have to do it big and that's just our nature. And so I'm just gonna tell you about the, the trial and error of what I did, <coughs> excuse me. And um, so anything you have to put into the chat room, um, as I go, uh, my partners here are strategically watching it so they can pull stuff out and um, answer and maybe ask me questions. Um, I am going to kind of buzz through everything because um, I have a lot of technology tips to show you too. Um, I have, I've, we're going to be throwing those website links in the chat so that if you are on your, um, if you're on your laptops, then you can actually just copy and paste it and click over. And uh, the links are also going to be available here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, and um, here's, here's some of the questions you need to ask yourself if you are considering launching a new program. Um, is your current program successful? So before you want to go adding in new certifications, you know, is your program the best it could be? Uh, are there things that you might need to tweak and instead of doing four things halfway, um, you know, do a couple of things all the way. Uh, take a step back, see what your pass rates are, see what your um, retainability is, see what the job market is, um, those kinds of things. So, you know, do, do you, are you strong enough to where you can support another program in there or is it just gonna be spreading yourself too thin? Um, the second thing would be um, always learn from what the other schools around you and in your state because they have those things in common you want to learn what from them you want what's their advice and what worked for them and what didn't work for them and um, they can help you a lot as well because our rules here in South Carolina may be a little bit differently different although I do have um, the standards for these things pulled up for you guys um, number three what type of curriculum do you want and I'm asking you this because um, of something I'll get into uh, in a couple of screens. Um, there's more than one curriculum. NHA works really well. And I was one of the first uh, teachers to get in from South Carolina on NHA. And I will tell you in the beginning, it was, there weren't a lot of resources. So, you know, you're used to having things that you can have tangible quizzes to, to give the kids a grade. And give them worksheets and, you know, activities and things. It wasn't there. I basically created everything for all three of those certifications myself. And in talking to NHA through that um, torturous year, um, they grew a lot because of it. And, and their 2.0 versions that came out were a lot more user-friendly for a high school environment. Um, and I believe that they've come out with some more since then. So uh, it is improving. Um, one thing that I did was, uh, and because they were just kind of launching all these certifications, um, th they gave us, or we purchased the online um, supplements that they had, um, and then they gave us the hard copy um, workbook. So um, that might be something if you're going into it for the first time, they may be willing to work something like that out with you. Um, having a community of relationships for these kids to come in and do things. Um, there's some challenges there, especially now, because the challenges I faced didn't even have to do with uh, what we've been facing with COVID-19 now. So there's going to be added issues there. And um, five is just know what your mandatory equipment and supplies for certain programs are, because 
I literally went overboard. I went overboard. I, um, it was, I was fortunate enough to apply for a couple of grants that helped me um, outside of Perkins funds and um, what we had for a budget. But uh, my, my school was very supportive going into these programs and they were excited about it. And, um, you know, they, they were champs behind me and supporting whatever I needed. So um, these are just some of the things you want to ask yourself. Here's your barriers. A lot of the kids don't have their own transportation. And so, and those of you who are already doing work-based and clinical stuff, you already know that. Um, age restrictions. Um, now, one of the problems I ran into was the fact that the nursing facilities and the long-term care facilities are very open-minded around our area about having students come in for certified nursing assisting. Um, and there's some clear state um, guidelines around that. A lot of the others, if you're trying to get into maybe, um, I had a manager of a their cardiovascular unit for the hospital was like really excited to have the kids coming in and doing um, EKGs in the in the office and maybe helping with pulmonary, re I mean, cardiac rehab and uh, setting up Holter monitors. They were all about it, but their administration said no. Um, they wouldn't even let them come in for a job shadow day. I had, I started panicking. I, I couldn't get anybody into anywhere and get them some good hands-on EKGs with real patients. Um, now, when you get a certification with NHA, this is a certification. And um, I want to preface what I'm going to say with, I'm not, I'm not here to kind of discourage you at all at all. I just want you to be really, really knowledgeable about the things that will pop up that you don't know are coming. So um, the NHA program, anybody 18 years or older can sign up for their program and pay for it and take it and pass a test. Our, um, you know, it can be anybody, not school related, any, any person 18 years of, of age or older can go in, look at all, you know, purchase their learning materials, take the test, and they're certified. And there's, n there's no pathway for them because they're a national certification. Um, state requirements aren't tied into that. So they can get the certification from NHA, but when they go to apply at some of the facilities, um, which is what you see here at the end, accepted credentials, uh, when you go to apply at a lot of facilities, they don't accept it. And they literally say on a lot of the websites around here. So we have two major hospital organizations. One of them is Prisma Health and one of them is our local and med health. Um, and med health was accepting um, patient care technician certifications from NHA. However, when you go to um, anything in Prisma Health would not accept an NHA certification. And that's the giant around us. That's where the kids really could have gotten some good job placement. Uh, I couldn't get to the front door. We tried everything and um, they just, they wouldn't even talk to us. So um, there were a lot of problem barriers and stuff there with the kids that did get these certifications that would go apply for the jobs and they couldn't get a job. And that frustrated me. So um, then the, the issues we had with phlebotomy is that they don't want anybody under the age of 18 um, doing anything invasive at all. That's a DHAC thing. And, um, but none of the facilities would allow them to come in until they were 18 years old. So I had half of my kids were 18, half of them weren't. And I was fortunate enough uh, through somebody that was on my advisory board uh, that was at the local junior college. She allowed, um, she, she kind of went to bat for us with their medical assisting program and uh, the place they were doing clinicals was a private lab. And we have several of those that are kind of popping up here and there. And the private lab um, were very helpful and they did want to um, support us. So that very first year, as long as the kids were 18 and they had their TB test and they, you know, they had all the flu shot and it's on the HIPAA, they could actually go in and do clinicals. Um, over that summer, uh, the management changed at that facility and the next manager wouldn't allow us in. Uh, and she said they had uh, other students from other organizations coming in and they just um, didn't 
um, there's, they didn't have space. So for those of you who aren't familiar with NHA, that's the National Health Career Association. And it's uh, one of the certifying agencies that is really marketed towards secondary education. Um, so we, uh, the, and they have, sev they have several different programs. So uh, you have to just kind of look at, look at these things, and do, some, do some shopping around, which I've done already for you. Um, and I've looked uh, at some of the medical facilities in your area to kind of see where that's at. Um, now, um, most places, if someone comes in and applies as a patient care technician, they will not hire them unless they have their CNA license as well. So they want it above and beyond. They want it on top of it. So um, there's just some issues that I ran into here that you would want to make sure you have all ironed out before you go um, forward. So here's, here's the question. Is it a success if you're able to launch this program? Are you going to be able to make it worth your energy and your time? Is it going to be something that's truly going to help the kids once they graduate? And in and, and overall, sure, if they're going to take it, um, they're going to take advantage of it. Absolutely. Um, so you have to look at your pass rate. Um, my pass rate was 97 percent um, on every one of the tests. I had 100 percent a couple of times. Um, other than that, I never had more than um, one not pass that test, um, any, any of the three. And last year I had 24 students take all three tests. <coughs> so here's, here's another question for you. Um, commitment and, um, use, and we've already talked about job placement and I'll kind of go there in a second, but this, this is exhausting. This is exhausting. You start dealing with having to, um, have kids there on the day that you teach using a butterfly syringe. You have to have them there on the day that you teach this or that. You have five kids absent, then they've missed it. They, you got to find time to go back and reteach it to them appropriately. And um, so looking back, what would I do different? I would probably, if I was going to have to do it again, I would choose one. And the reason is because um, if, you, if I look back at the students who have actually, who passed all these exams and go y'all, the amount of students that have actually applied for jobs has been about probably 5% out of all the certifications I've done. And sadly, um, I mean, I, and I actually had this conversation last night because uh, one of the students that went through all four years of the program, uh, the health science program, and got certified EKG tech, certified lobotomy tech, certified patient care tech. Um, he got, um, he was a CPR instructor for two years. He was host officer. He was all that in a bag of chips, got accepted to Clemson Nursing School, is my child. He graduated last year. So, um, and I, of course, you know, I was so excited that he did all of these things and all of these students that graduated along with him in the program because I've seen them grow up since they were three. And one of those 24 students literally went into um, a job, not even using one of theirs. They went into home health aid and they didn't have to have a certification for that, but they had really good background knowledge and it was helpful. And so and recently, you know, COVID-19 hits my son's home now. And, um, you know, we had this conversation last night. I said, why? You know, just because I'm having this meeting tomorrow, webinar tomorrow, I'll, tell me why y'all aren't using this. And he said, I think it's because we wanted to do them and we wanted to get the certifications, number one, to successfully get placed in a college program. Number two, to really see if it's something we wanted to do. We knew going through the experience and learning the skills and going and volunteering at the nursing home and I did have them go in and do as with the activities coordinator and do 20 hours of volunteer um, hours with the, you know, just to learn how to communicate with patients and not be so terrified of them. And, and they loved it. They did it and they loved it. But, um, you know, none of these kids have utilized these certifications. So whereas you're trying to set them up for success, here's the two things on the other end that I've, I've had happen. 
Number one, they can't get a job unless they have their CNA. Number two, they don't try to use it. And so as of last week, everybody that had passed their patient care tech cert certification, um, that it expired last, last week. So I, I want to tell you that side of the story. Uh, and I want to say you can be successful with this and your students can be very successful. Be limited on the amount of students you allow into the program because unlike CNA, you, ha you have the authority to choose how many kids come into this. So really don't, you know, don't overdo it. Give yourself a year to learn from that. Make sure you have these things in place. And it always works out well if you already have job placement for them afterwards. And so I just wanted to share that side of the story with you. Um, I would have never thought in a million years that after four years of teaching um, these certifications that maybe three to four students actually went through with um, working for a short period of time. Most of them let everything expire. Then they went through a CNA program and then they started working um, in some of the locations and you know, got into their programs. And it does benefit them getting into a college program um, if they already have all of this knowledge. So um, are there any questions before I move on from this? I have one more thing to show you on the slide, but um, any questions about anything I've talked about? So uh, Rhonda, uh, Rhonda, do you think it's maturity? Um, because some of these jobs are really hard for an 18 year old. I mean, especially CNA, but you said they went back and got their CNA or do you think mm -hmm. they got discouraged about not being able to get a job or it was just, they needed that um, validation of their knowledge and that was enough for them. I think that was a lot of it. Um, you know, whereas, whereas um, my son could go and get a job in 15, 20 places making 12, $15 an hour doing what he does, just because of the, our, the people we know and the people that he's, he's really um, gained um, respect from a lot of people in the local health, healthcare industries. Um, a lot of them could go to work for like blood connection or working with the um, blood banks and stuff. They could do that. That's my hound dog. I'm sorry. He's supposed to be outside right now. Um, so anyway, so they, um, I, I think they would rather go to work in a restaurant and they would rather, I am so sorry. The dog's supposed to be outside. Um, I, I think it's like you said, validation and knowing that if they apply to these college programs, they would be able to, um, do the job and understand the program and they wouldn't be terrified of it. They know what's coming, so to speak. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of them is like, oh, this is going to be fun. We get to use needles in class. Well, I mean, that was it. that, you know, I don't think that was it. I think it, what I've seen as they've graduated and moved on and gone to college has been that one to two years after they've graduated, I start getting an influx of emails and phone calls and texts. That's when they come back is when they hit about age 20, um, they're like, okay, we're, we know we have to grow up now. Can you help us and what can we do? So that, that's been my history with it. That's been um, what I've seen. And again, you know, they come into it thinking, really believing in their heart that they're gonna follow through and go straight into the job force when they graduate. They believe that. By the time you get through second semester and they're so sick of school and they're just ready to graduate, nothing else matters. Get me out of my mom's house. I'm sick of having rules. It just kind of starts going down on that list of priorities. And I would say that's literally for like 90, 90, probably at least 90% of the students that have gone through these programs. So again, don't be discouraged. Just be prepared for that. Um, and don't, because I took, honestly, you, you know, us as teachers, we tend to take a lot of things personally. And I did, I did. I, I, it hurt me. It hurt my heart because I thought, what are y'all doing? Um, you know, you have to let them go through these seasons and mess up and get to go on their first trips with their friends without mom and dad there. And, you know, just let them grow and mess up and make mistakes and come back and go, okay, you were right. What can I do now? Um, and maybe, and then maybe they are better prepared for that. Um, with with a couple of years of age on them but just know going into it 
Um, don't get your feelings hurt at the end if they just start all dropping off the face of the earth and they, they have no desire to go straight to a job and be a grown up, you know, so that's my advice for you. Um, and I'm always, I'll have my email at the end of it. I want you to be sure and ask, you know, if, if you start preparing to do one of these programs, um, you know, just be, feel free to reach out to me. I mean, I'll even do a Zoom meeting with you. I'll do something. But I, I would love to just kind of offer my successes and failures with you. Um, I will tell you on the NHA thing for medical assisting, you got to watch what you're looking at as far as um, there's a CCMA, which is a um, certified clinical medical assistant. And then there's a CMA, which is a certified medical administrative assistant. So CMAA and CCMA. So just kind of be aware of those. Um, so I'm going to move on um, and you feel free to um, feel free to, you know, email me or anything with any questions. So um, I have to cough one second. <coughs> talking, talking this much makes me thirsty. All right. So we're going to move on to your websites. This is what everybody looks forward to. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually on my screen, I have everybody showing up on the right and I have the chat on the right. So I'm going to just kind of, I won't be able to see anything you put in the chat room. Um, so that's why Katrina and Karen are there to um, help navigate. Uh, we're going to go to what? I'm, okay. So these are going to be um, sites that are specifically for anatomy. Now it's, it's really kind of a good time for you because you'll have time to play over the summer and really learn to navigate them. Um, you can't just hop onto these things and automatically have it down, but uh, these are things that have just worked for me a few times. I live and breathe by them for everything um, anatomy-wise. So this is um, this is web anatomy, um, and your students from here can go to any of these topics. Uh, as you see, it's with the it's a free uh, resource from University of Minnesota, um, and it's got all kinds of stuff. Now, when you get into the anatomy here, uh, this actually has uh, only come up within the last year or so. So you can get in here for some of your entry level stuff, uh, med terms. I'm um, gonna go into skull and bones um, is what I'm gonna hit. All right, so there's all types of levels of uh, practice that these guys can do, uh, that your students and that you can kind of pull up and if you have a touch screen, um, you can, or like a clear touch or something, you can pull these up on them and, and the kids can actually touch them and, and choose from a, a level of drop down windows. So I'm just going to do a skeleton anterior for medium. So we're going to see what that is. So they have all sorts of levels of them. They have, um, um, where they have a lot of the little bitty bones and all the processes and, and foramens and things like that, or very simplified versions as you're going through it in layers. So um, you all ha always have these drop down windows and I know what everything is. I'm just gonna go through here and click some stuff so I can show you what happens afterward. Um, all right, so it, let's say I go through all of them and I'm gonna score the test. All right, so if I score the test, it's gonna say you got one out of 10 correct because hey, and I was just guessing there. Um, so it'll tell you the right ones and you can clear the form and you can do it all over again. Um, and I used to have these, um, well, I'm supposed to clear the form. Normally it clears the full form. Of course, that's not going to while I'm doing this. Um, clear form. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, and there we go. I'm going to go back here to skeletons. Uh, and you can retake the test. You can do some that are, if it says text here, they can go in and do this and they can actually type in um, the term. So you're dealing with uh, spelling, such a must spell. So um, you have something for every single um, body system. You can navigate it here to drop that down. It'll take you all over the place. Um, you cannot have them send you the scores. Um, so the way I utilize this in class is just like if, if some people are working on something and other people are done. I'll pull it up on the um, front board and they can they can all go up there and take turns doing it or they can actually just pull it up on the Chromebooks and um, or you know whatever they want to do. They can screenshot it um, once they get to 
a certain like a score that they're happy with if we're if i'm just saying show me that you got a 100 on the skeletal system level four so they'll do it until they get 100 and then they'll screenshot it and send it to me i don't really use it as a grade i just use it as hey this was a great resource KenHub uh, is something I've rel relatively recently come across. I've used some of the images before um, when I'm teaching anatomy or body systems or medical stuff. And, and so I love that it has a lot of images on it that you can go through and look at. And you can, they have a paid and they have a free version. You can pretty much get away with the free version. Um, if I was going to go into, uh, let's go into abdomen and pelvis. <clears throat> so it has all these different layers. You, you, can, you can navigate it over here on the left um, and scroll down. They have lessons. So let's say you're having to do online learning like we've been doing here the past uh, couple of months. You can actually assign these lessons and the kids will start them. And um, it will pull it up. No copy. Number of videos, number of quizzes, number of terms, number of articles. So it has a mixture of things and resources that you can use for your students. Um, and you can go through, and uh, I do recommend you kind of go through and and just check on things, check everything out, make sure it's not too in depth or like it's in depth enough, depending on what you're teaching. Um, and you can go through and look at the quizzes and this is, um, this is gonna show you and highlighted green what a bunch of these are. So it's a really, really great resource. I love it. Um, you can do practice quizzes, you can browse their atlas. Um, it actually has videos you can put in um, based on whatever your uh, system is that you're in. And you can just copy and paste the link here um, for the students to go in and watch these videos and then you can have your own quiz on it. So uh, it, it has been a great tool for me over um, the COVID learning, but I've used it for a while um, additionally. So visible body, um, I'm, I already have these open. I'm going to kind of go up here in my own tabs so that um, I don't know if I'm signed in here or not. All right, so visible body, again, we have a paid version, we have a free version. Um, and it goes, uh, if you have one of those VR labs um, where they can wear the uh, virtual reality sunglasses and they have the little laser pointer. I work in a brand new career center. I was transferred from a high school to a career center and um, they have one of these crazy, they call it the incubation lab and it's where engineering comes together and they have all these programs in this VR lab where the little laser pointed uh, Bosch and Michelin went in and donated all the money for this. And they can literally take apart a car with a little laser beam and then put it back together correctly. So they have, but they have a license for this. I can't get in there often with my kids, but the guy that runs it is really cool. He wants them to be able to get in there and play around with it. So as we finish up a unit, he'll block us in for 45 minutes to go in and do a lesson. Um, I will say Visible Body has done a free membership through COVID Learning. So if we were to happen to have that again going into the fall, it might be a great resource for you to reach out to. And I would definitely go through the learn how to use this app um, webinars, because if not, you'll just spend more time than you really need to uh, learning how to do it. It's got some, some cool stuff though. You can move everything around. Um, here's instructors, courses, um, here's your AR augmented reality. And so uh, play around with it. It's got some great 3D animation stuff. Um, again, stop me if there's questions I need to stop and answer because I do not have my chat window up so that I can see the entire thing. Are we good for me to move on? Yeah, Rhonda, one thing I was going to say with the visible body, um, because we were not able to purchase like a district thing this year or anything like that, their app went on sale at the very beginning of school for like 99 cents a thing, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. And we don't have iPads in our school except for like one class set that we share 
between the whole school. And we were able to like say, okay, 21 through 25, we're going to purchase the app and um, that kind of thing. It's going to be on these. So if Karen needs to use them, she can. This is the days that she'll need them. And on the days that I was introducing the body system, the students would have like one iPad for like four or five students and they would look at the structure while we did this. Um, so Patrice, for visible body, the way I use it, we used iPads so they could touch it and move it around. Um, and, but on a laptop, um, they just use the mouse to kind of like drag it. My kids liked it on the iPads better but that was also because it got them off of their Chromebooks for a little bit and they, we didn't have to buy as many um, licenses to do that. So you kind of have to look at, do you need a site license or do you need it to be like that computer IP address kind of thing, but do look for the apps to go on sale um, at the beginning of the year is when they do it. And it works really well for us with visible body. All right, thanks. I had muted myself. Um, I'm putting these um, links. I'm going to get Karen and um, Katrina to kind of help me out here with this copy. Uh, and as a since you guys have a copy of the um, since you guys have a copy of the. PowerPoint, as I go through it, if you'll um, maybe open them in a separate, separate window and copy and paste the links here so that as I'm talking, if they want to hop over and go to those links, that'd be a great idea for them. And then I'm going to close them out as I go because that way I don't get lost. All right, there's a visible body. So again, they do have some great free resources. They and I, I changed the link that was, well, maybe I didn't. Um, uh, I, anyway, I just put the one up here in the chat so that you can see what the free one was about. Um, it can be super complex too. So um, you can make it really easy. You can make it um, you know, really complex. Just depends on the level that you teach at. All right, so BioInteractive. Somebody has their microphone on mute. There we go, thanks. Um, all right, so we just talked about visible body, biointeractive, and this is going to be the next one that I, I love, love, love to use. I need to minimize that. Okay. Um, let's see, let's go. All right, this has so much stuff. Um, you can literally, and I'm not, I'm trying to get my little drop down window with everybody's picture on it, uh, moved off to the side. So that's what I keep messing with. <clears throat> All right, this has something for everybody. And um, I, can't, I apologize that I can't remember your name, um, our, our animal science. Um, this is gonna be something that'll help you out a lot. Um, you can go over here on the left and look at topics. I, I already had that opened up. Uh, so if you can kind of see what you got going on, you could actually search for animal science or whatever. Uh, they have an entire lesson. They have just videos or images or uh, even activities. Uh, I use this uh, in a lot of my, just for a little additional, hey, here's a, um, here's a link. I want you to go to this link. And then um, I think the one I had had to do with, um, I want to say uh, melanocytes and let me look at, um, uh, I think this is the one. How does skin get its color? All right, so um, this is an interactive one. So when you go in there, uh, it'll give you great animation um, we'll click on this and click. Um, so it's going to have this cool video, but it also a lot of them have these student worksheets. You can download the worksheet, re-upload it into PDF and have them fill it out. Um, or you can print it and they can fill it out. You can show the video in class 
and they have the worksheets there with them if you don't have the one-to-one -one technology. And so you can print this up and um, they can answer the questions as the video is going. And um, they have so many different things in here, y'all. There's, there's just, they have it different levels. Like I said, they have it for um, college, AP bio, um, general, and, and they have, you can basically just search for anything and they have it. And they really have things in there you would never think about. Like if you were to type in medicine or healthcare, there's just going to be 4,000 things that come up and you just go through there and you search for it. Um, so this has been a great um, resource for me to use. Uh -huh, see, I just opened my chat up because I could see it pinging. So, um, so yay, Shelby, I'm glad that will help you. I've got a couple of them, I'm telling you, you'll be, you'll be glad you came. So uh, again, practice with these kinds of things over the summer. You have planning tools, you have classroom resources. Um, save it, save it, save it. Don't stress your out of, yourself out over it. Just, you know, do what you can and play with it. So this is TED-Ed. Um, it was gonna be the next, it's the next link on my, on my sheet. So TED-Ed, if, um, now I'm already logged into it. So we've all heard TED Talks. Well, this is TED-Ed. And so I'm gonna just hit discover first because that's gonna be where you would start at. You do want to create an account and it's free. And you can type in interests and things like that. So you can always hit your little, it is a little, you have to look for stuff on here. Um, so there's that, your little search bar, and you can type in anything. So if you open it up and say animal, you know, equine, whatever, or um, nervous system, whatever, like a million things are going to pop up here. So I'm, I've already got a ton of them saved and I'm just going to go straight to um, my lessons that I have saved. You can find your lesson, then you can create a lesson and um, you're just going to actually click on the lesson itself, create and then share. And so uh, you just, it, it's not hard to navigate at all. So I'm going to go to my uh, lessons and you'll see just a few of the things that I have um, saved and that I used, especially during COVID-19, um, but I've used them for years. Um, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom for this particular year. Uh, I'm big on teaching about sleep deprivation. Big, big, big on it. Um, I want them to know what not sleeping or sleeping with their TV on does to them. So these videos are literally usually a minute and a half to three minutes tops. So uh, you can go in and um, I, you'll see in here, there's some of them that are, um, you'll see them twice. Well, I started learning to, um, since I had two classes of 24 that were going in and doing this, um, I ended up changing the questions around on one of them. So I would assign my morning class that one of them and I'd assign the afternoon one another one. So I knew if they were still in each other's work. Um, how lungs work, how brain, there's some crazy ones. Um, sometimes I would have the kids look up their own. Um, you know, you find something cool that interests you and share it on Google Classroom. Um, and so that's what, that's what we're going to do for the next 15 minutes. So, you know, I'll have them go on it. They'll share it in Google Classroom and on maybe just a link um, or a Google Doc that I have and we'll, we'll go for it. Um, I'll pull it up in class if they find stuff. Um, I'm going to go up here to, um, there's another one about sleep. I told you, I don't shut up about it. Um, so if you were to go to how blood pressure works and click on it, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm going to go down here. So when you share it, it, when it says customize this lesson, that's when you customize and then you can share. So if you see think uh, it is after this, just it shows up in yours, it shows up in the students just to like have them sign in with Google or create an account. So here's the multiple choice questions. So you can go through and see them um, and see what they're going to be doing and uh, customize it. If you don't like that question, take it out. Um, and then later you can actually come in and go, okay, uh, I'm going to manage my lessons. Let me go back to this last one. Go back. All right. Um, if you can see on my screen, um, 
down here we have uh, like this one, how does the oxygen travel through your body? Um, we were getting into the respiratory system just as we went into um, uh, distance learning. I'm not going to click on it because if I do, I've still got my students' names in there. So I'm going to be careful not to share that information. But right here, it tells me that 19 students did this one. And so that um, you can edit it, you can delete it. I can look at the discussions. I can share it with y'all if I wanted to. Um, and so I think there's a question for me hanging out in the chat room. So let me um, hop over there. I have not seen a question. I did just get a little, um, there we go. Let me see what the question is. Oh, great. Okay. I see that environmental virtual assessment skills. Let me look real quick. Cause, and in a minute, um, I'm, I'm, she had a question about um, plant science. Ms. Okay. About, was there anything for plant science? Oh, every I, one of these sites that I'm on has stuff for plant science. You okay. just got to go in and Google and put it in the search bar. And it is going to be, I mean, all of these have to do with, a, I would say 80% of the things I'm doing are going to have to do with anything in general science. Um, some of it's just related to anatomy, but um, yeah, that, you can find so many resources on these things. So that's everything about TED Ed. I'm going to keep going or I'm going to run out of time. Um, all right, guys, I'm minimizing my screen again. So, um, and uh, if y'all have anything specific, uh, if one of you guys will unmute and, and tell me to pause and I'll listen for the question. Um, so the next site, let's see, um, here's Nova. All right. So Nova is, um, it's a sub company, uh, partnered with PBS. And, um, I just pulled this up because it, it had, I just literally went to the main screen and hit whatever I have pulled up before. And you can actually go in and show part of these videos. Uh, you can, you can just show all kinds of and yes, this is going to be for animal science, plant science, um, anything disease related, um, anything, a lot of careers, a lot of things like that. So you can go in, um, pull this stuff up, watch it in your class. Um, I'm not sure if any of these have to, um, I'm pretty sure I was able to go straight to this without even logging in with um, an account. If you go, if you have your school through Discovery Ed or PBS Ed, where you have to have a school-based account, I think they can be a little more um, picky and choosy about that. But I think they're beginning over the last couple of years to open up those subscriptions to everything. And um, all right, I'm going to stop that. All right, all right. So um, we're going to move on to my next. Um, slide and that's going to be our clinical practice site. So this is going to be for those do working in um, in you know health science or um, something related to that. Just because it's so hard to do hands-on labs right now, uh, this is going to be uh, great resources for you to um, use to practice reading a sphygma manometer, a blood pressure cuff or gauge, or um, practice with some different case set case studies and look, they don't have to be level four for this. This is the stuff the kids love. And so if you're having to give them all the boring stuff, then throwing these kind of websites out there, they don't have to get it right. It just teaches them to critically think. If they can work through these little case studies, then they just feel like they're the smartest people in the world and then they get eager to learn more. And um, you can tie in some of your other stuff to go and see how important it is to be able to write this accurately because if you don't then it you know it could make a huge difference so um, this has a little bit of everything um, a lot of stuff you don't need like heart sounds and murmurs and things like that really um, lung sounds but uh, some of those uh, a lot of us will go ahead and add in here's some quizzes extras blah 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 I'm gonna go to blood pressure so these actually go in line and, and they're going to show you the blood pressure, um, how to do it and what um, hypertension guides are. Now, we know that if we choose 10 different texts or resources, 
you're going to get 10 different answers on what that range can be most of the time. So I'm always careful to tell them, don't, don't ever walk into another teacher's room th in three years and say, well, you're wrong because Ms. Abbott said it was this. No, um, you're going to do whatever they tell you to do as far as that range goes, and you just have to have an understanding for, um, for that as a guideline. So um, this will actually go in and teach you how to take the blood pressure. Um, you can, uh, it's, it, it has one that you can pump up. I'm not going to do it because if I do, then we're going to get to hear a blood pressure get taken. So um, if you hit here, how to take a blood pressure, and you don't have to sign in. You can, but you don't have to. Um, this tells you a little, it's like a short and sweet version of it, an overview, I would call it, an introduction possibly. And um, so then you go to um, a review. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit adult cases. And um, here's how to use, there's, there's a couple of these and so I never can remember which one I have to, one of them's just gonna take us to straight to the blood pressure um, manometer to read and the other one's going to uh, take me, make me go through all this stuff. Um, so if they were to hit blood pressure, they can, um, there we go. Take the blood pressure. There we go. Um, so you come down here and um, you have to have headphones or speakers on. If I click this, it's going to bring it up and it's going to pump it up and start letting it down. You just look for what you think the number is and you type in the systolic and the diastolic, submit, and I'll tell you if you were the, within plus or five of, um, of that one. So uh, that one is a great one. And um, so my next one's going to be, I think, here. Okay, easy auscultation is the other one. Um, they look so much alike. I swear, some. So this one's the one I just went over. Easy escalation. It looked like I got it. it looked like they were mixed up a little bit. Let me go here. That's okay. I need someone to unmute and tell me if this is the one I just went over. Nope. This is the new one. Okay, blood pressure. Like I said, they 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 look a lot alike. So getting in there to navigate it. Plus my uh, screen is being a little slow. All right, so um, anyway, you can go in and play with this. It teaches you how to do the blood pressure. I'm not gonna go in and um, do something you'll already know how to do because we still have a lot of other stuff to cover. Um, so let's see, skills anatomy. Oh, y'all, um, mm. let's see, this is um, so good. It has everything, like so much of everything. There's not even enough time to show you everything. Um, this is one of those sites that it, it has a cumulative list of things, of all of resources for you to use. And you can go in and navigate this to do whatever you want to do. I mean, it's so huge and so big. And I love that I've actually used this image on lots and lots of times and I've blown it up really big and you can actually see the pathway of the electrical conduction uh, they have it's just the I'm a little bit of a heart geek as well so um, there is no way on the planet we would have enough time to go through this resource you see it oh look there's animals and so this is going to be oh I saw horse uh, animals plants everything uh, case studies you name it, it it's there so um, this is just something I wanted to throw up there for you guys. And um, this is this is pretty cool. Um, this is a vital sign simulator. All right. For this, um, you want to download it. It is safe, I promise. Um, I'm going to move this out of my way. All right. Looky here. This is what we're looking at um, for the 
vial sign simulator. I can't make this, I, I was working on it before we uh, started and I, I wasn't able to make this window smaller because I haven't practiced with it in a while. So um, you do see that, well, I'm gonna open this other window up. And it is literally a patient monitor right there. Um, you can choose what the SPO2 is, you can choose it, what the reading is going to be here. Uh, you can check these and it's going to open up those uh, non-invasive blood pressure. You can come down here and change your EKG rhythms. You can do so much stuff and, and you can use it as a guide for teaching them, no, you should have, you know, you should have given them oxygen or you should have put their head in Trendelenburg because now their blood pressure is dropping or whatever. I mean, you can do it on the spur of the moment. You don't have to have a plan for this. Uh, this is something that you can literally just have fun with in that last 10 or 15 minutes of class when, you know, you've run out of stuff to do. Everybody's got gotten caught up and you're not going to um, work on anything else. Um, I'm looking through the chat real quick. Um, let's see. I'm glad y'all like it. I'm just making sure. I told you there was going to be a lot of information and I'm sorry. Oh, look, you can shock them. That's the best. Nothing like shocking. Um, I think one of the, while well, I'm getting back to my PowerPoint, um, one of the funniest things I've ever shown in, in class was, and I, I, I just get a kick out of it. I know it sounds wrong, but where healthcare providers have to have a sick sense of humor um, is, is some of these YouTube videos that it shows them doing a conscious defibrillation, <laughs> not, not with them in a systole, but it's when they're doing a cardio version. Now they just kind of do conscious sedation and then they never remember anything happened. And um, they think I'm horrible when I show them those things, but you know, that's, that's the truth of it all. All right, so um, I'm gonna close these out, bam. All right, um, all right. Um, I'm opening up the chat room real quick. Uh, I don't want to move on until I know that I have answered your questions for this. And uh, I don't want to do that. All right, I'm going to pull up my chat window, maybe. There. Oops, I lost it. All right, my chat's up. Is there anything I can answer really quick before I move on? Because I know that y'all are like, oh my Lord, this is so much stuff. Nobody, nobody? All right. Um, Ron, just, just remind them that we, we share this PowerPoint with their district staff and then their district staff, I, I feel sure we'll push it out to them. Yes. So um, they will, you know, while they're drinking from a fire hose right now, they will they have- They are, yeah. Time. Yeah, being waterboarded, that's what's happening. But again, this is, like I said, this is, I wanted to give you as much content as I possibly could to help make it uh, beneficial for you going into the summer at, uh, time so that you, you know, take a breather. Don't worry about this right now. Um, a lot of the, the sites are going to be in the group chat, but, you know, if you're like me, I just, I like to kind of have them all in one little bookmark. Um, uh, last week when Kennedy Chandler announced that he uh, You were cutting out. I didn't hear you very well. Okay. I'm gonna, um, I don't, I, I'm assuming that was David. Um, I don't have my, I don't have my screens up to where I can see your faces. So David, if that was you, I didn't hear you very well. Type There's something. also William on as well. So oh, well, William, you came in, in later. There you go. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is y'all bust in any second and ask me something if you need to, because I you were cutting out a lot. So- um, Sorry, that, that wasn't me if you can hear me. Okay. I, think, I think William's trying to unmute and talk to you. Okay. I'm gonna is we is, have the other half. Is William there? 
Yeah, this is the can you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm going to keep going. Um, I'll keep going, and then if you guys oh, yeah. need to stop me. Did you have a question? Okay. Okay. Um, let me go back. Here we go. All right, so these sets are gonna be um, more towards just digital learning in general. And, um, and William, I think, you're, I think you're unmuted. My, my, my um, earphones are just, I can, I'm thinking that's what I hear. Okay, all right, so um, these are gonna be things from assessments to supplemental lessons to, um, fun ways for the students to be able to um, give you feedback, a little bit of everything. Um, the first is Socrative. Um, so Socrative, a lot of people know about Socrative. Um, and so what I would really like for you to do is to, to show a thumbs up in the chat room if you know a lot about um, Socrative because if everybody knows a lot about this, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. This is an assessment tool that you have. It's free. There's a paid version too, like with everything. But I do have, um, I do have my chat window up, so I'm kind of peeking around. So um, if you log in here, um, you're going to log in as a teacher, uh, maybe K-12. Um, I'm not going to go through that process because I'm already logged in here. So you're gonna go in and there's a teacher version and there's a student version. So when you go to log in, it says log in with Google or log in with your email or whatever, the students need to create an account, a student account, and you need to create a teacher account. The best way to make sure the right thing happens here is that you find the link for the student account and copy it and paste it to where they can just click the link. If not, they're, it just goes crazy. Um, it's not hard, they make it hard. Now, this is my room number, and um, I have had this same room number seven years since I started this account. So it never ever changes, it's always the same, and I literally have a little label maker, and I put labeling things, and uh, I label all the tables in my room with this number and um i see what time it is just so y'all know i do see what time it is and i'm sad because i need to keep going um you can um you can go in through quizzes um and add a quiz you can share the these quizzes by quiz number or they have a little bit of a um you can uh they have a template here we go if you if you click import uh, you can import um, this Google or this um, um, Excel spreadsheet thing that they will give you that's already formatted. You can put all your questions in there, choose the answers. Um, and these are just, um, I wasn't smart about the way that I named them. Um, a lot of you are probably going, well, what's FS? Well, as I prepare my students for their national consortium or the, the completers test, um, then I have gone in and input all of those practice tests into about seven different websites. And um, I actually didn't do it myself. I used this little thing called Child Slave Labor and, um, and they all want extra credit, fine. You want extra credit? You create four templates, 25 questions each, then I will drop your lowest minor grade and I will give you a 100 for it. You are limited to five. And or, or I'll limit it to like two uh, a quarter, but I'm tricking them. I'm tricking them into studying. They're studying while they're doing this because they're seeing the answers as they go. They don't know what they're doing. I'm not telling them if you don't. So um, you can come back. There's space race. There's a couple of tickets. I mean, a couple of uh, little games you can play with them. Um, rooms. That's for their prime, uh, their professional. If you if you got a paid account. And then you have reports. And so if, if I went into reports, I could actually go in and 
choose date, time, whatever. I can pull it up. I'm not going to because um, students' names are there. Well, you know what? I don't think they are. Oh, they're not. Look at there. Um, uh, one great thing about this is I'm going to leave it like this. And usually I have my entire class up there. Uh, I'm going to show answers. So you can go here and look at the questions that you asked, but it also gives me, if when I've got my entire class up here, I can see what were the most missed questions. Where do I need to go back and, and look at, uh, you know, or is there something wrong with the question? Maybe it got typed in wrong. Um, or maybe the answer got typed in wrong. So I can do that and I go back here and assess where my strengths and weaknesses are. Um, the only thing it always defaults to, um, well, it's, it's on, Okay, you can go to progress, like how many of them are done, how many of them are not done. And so uh, it will, if you show their names, it'll show you their names and it'll download it into an Excel format or, and just email it to you or put it in your drive so that you can have your scores. So you can just download it and put them into your, your grade book. I use that thing for everything. Um, that and Google Forms. Um, all right, let's see. Um, I need to close some of these out. I'm going to keep going because I know we're running short. Flipgrid, um, man, this, okay. And, and Katrina is the Flipgrid guru. Um, I'm going to move on through my stuff, Katrina. And then if you want to go back through Flipgrid, if we have time, you can. Um, these are going to be, I had to make a brain hat. So you can create these grids and you go in and, all the backgrounds you can choose from. I still don't know everything about this. Um, and so I tell them they had to make a brain hat for a project. They had a little um, rubric to go by and this was all our distant learning. <clears throat> so I told them to record a two minute video, one to two minute video, comment on two other submissions. So this gets them watching the other videos. I know that they looked at them, uh, interacting with one another since we had a lot of classroom interaction um, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, this one, the, uh, it was another one that was my end of school. Um, it was my end of school one. Is this it? No. Uh -uh. So I, I, I have to navigate it still. There's, there's still a lot about it. I'm not a professional about it at all, but, um, I'll let uh, Katrina come back to that. Um, Cons Academy. Um, Cons Academy's out there. It's been out there for a while. Um, Cons Academy's got everything about everything. And um, I want you to know that I used Cons Academy as I took um, two online classes about three years ago. I had to take problem stats online, which was ridiculous. I hadn't had math in, I don't know how many years, 30. And I had to take problem stats online. Well, I wouldn't have made it without Cons Academy. I literally would go to the section and problem stats that we were in and listen to what the, he was he said, and I could go back in and get my homework done. So uh, Cons Academy's got everything about everything. I hear noise. Does somebody need to ask me a question? Um, Cons Academy, you can do, you can log in as a teacher and you can um, um, help and create a class. So here's, um, here's my class. Um, I didn't, uh, this is actually from two years ago and this was for, um, yeah, this was for um, another class, like a, not an introductory level, but you can go and you don't have to assign everything, but you can assign some things. And if you've never watched Khan's Academy, then you need to go in and click on anything that interests you and watch the guy. He's the bomb. And um, he explains things, he draws when he talks. Um, when, you're, when you assign quizzes in here and you can just pick and choose from them. Um, I did assign some cardiovascular stuff a couple of years ago and they told me that was the hardest stuff they'd ever seen in their life. And when I went back in, it was more of like an eight, like a college anatomy and physiology when it was, it was kind of big, but you can look at their scores and import them. You can, um, you know, you can set up the course mastery to where they go through all of these different things. And it's not just anatomy. There's healthcare systems, Medicare, Medicaid. Um, there's anything that has to do with health science. 
and every other thing on the planet. I would have my seniors go in and do their ACT prep and SAT prep from Khan's Academy. So literally anything you need to know about anything on the planet is here. And, um, and so that'll, that's a really, here, here it is. Here's everything. That. Everything for every level of every educational section on the planet, all kids ages. Um, I'm telling you, it's, it's great. I will tell you if you go into, um, Healthcare, healthcare doesn't just come up here easily. What did I, what did I have to do over there? Um, uh, you do for, let me search, for healthcare, health and medicine. Um, you can do a human anatomy here. David, if, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but your mic has come unmuted. Thank you. Um, so if you go to this one, um, it actually, you have to go all the way down to, uh, and it'll go into a lot of the healthcare stuff for you. Again, I apologize. I know I don't have a lot of time. And if you search for it, it will take you there. I promise. And if you can't find it, email me and I'll send you the exact link, um, to get, to get it there. Um, in the limited time I have left, cause you're going to get these, um, I want to share this link with you above anything else I've done um, or almost anything. CTEonline.org. Guys, anything, anything for any CTE class ever is on this thing. It, it's your whole course. It's your whole year if you want it. It'll give you standards to tie it to. It'll give you projects. It'll give you activities, lesson plans, videos, animations. You name it, it's got it. Uh, you can just literally, I'm not going to sign in. I didn't want to have to do that. Um, so yeah, you can go in here and, ch and choose by whatever you want and create a little step-by-step -step thing. See, create project. There you go. Create an outline, create a lesson, create anything you want to create. And uh, it's done for you. Look, ag and natural resources, any kind of CTE course whatsoever is going to be in here. And I'm telling you what, I could sit for 12 hours at least and go through and just mess around with this thing. It's great. Rhonda, who, Rhonda, who maintains this site? Don't know. Okay. Uh, let's look. Go to the bottom of the page. Contact us. No, that's not it. Uh, CTE online, whatever that. No, a Butte County Office of Education, Butte County might be in Montana, maybe. Not sure. Don't know. There, oh, there, is there it is. California. Okay. There it is. Go them. This is awesome stuff. I mean, seriously, this is one of the best sites I've happened across. And it saved my butt this year, that's for sure. Um, we have Ed Puzzle, Google Forms. Um, let's see. Real quickly, I pulled up your Tennessee Health Science Standards for patient care tech. I just want to open that real fast and then I'll take, I'll stay on a little bit over time and take your questions if you need me to. Um, I will show you on the uh, patient care tech thing that I did notice. Um, there is, all right, note, this certification is not interchangeable with CNA. For employment in a long-term care facility, caregivers must be certified nursing assistants. So I found this on your career and technology website. Um, the EKG technician, um, I have the link directly to your program for that because um, I, I wanted to go through it last night and make sure I didn't miss anything that maybe I could help you out with. So there's, you have the link there for yourselves. Um, there's a health science supply list um, interestingly enough for the different, um, and I'm sure a lot of you know where this stuff is, but if you're like me and you just kind of came into the uh, teaching world and all of a sudden there were resources you didn't find out about for four years, then that was me. Um, if you go to the top or at the bottom of here, you see anatomy and physiology, biomed, and these are what your state deems necessary for your different um, programs. 
Um, diagnostic medicine is where you're going to find the stuff for like medical assisting and patient care technician and, and or phlebotomy. I mean, so uh, there's more and more pages down there um, that you can go through. I also did a quick um, search here under Indeed, just because it's my go-to for finding jobs for people. And I did find a job in your area. I just did Memphis, Tennessee. Um, so look at your job market and this will go through and tell you if they're going to accept that certification. I will tell you, I did not find very many job openings in the, in the area for patient care technician, but it may be because we are not in a hiring phase right now either. So it could be that in a different season, there's going to be a lot more job opportunity for these certifications. And, um, you know, so hopefully, um, that's been a, some assistance to you. Um, I am going to go back to um, my Zoom meeting. Let's minimize this. I'm going to get back to where I can see y'all's little faces, maybe. And um, I don't know where y'all are. Um, there. Okay, um, somebody else hop in and let me try to find where my log on stuff is and I will um, be able to see your faces again. Nancy, Katrina, anybody. Okay, what, what do you want us to um, I, just I just know we're trying. I know it's almost wrap up time and I am is. trying to find my um, my way trying to open my window where your faces are because I moved it out of the way earlier and now I can't find it. Just stop sharing. Oh gosh, that's why you're the bomb. There y'all are. Hey. Hello. Hey everyone. All right, I'm gonna open up chat and I'm telling you what, I know that was a lot of stuff, um, but um, hopefully, hopefully it was um, of some help and I can, you know, definitely answer emails and stuff afterwards, after y'all take some breathing time in a couple of days away from your computer. So um, it is 4.30 on the dot. I can't believe I did it. Um, but I, I will open up the mic or the chat for any questions you have before um, we close. Uh, I don't have any questions, but I did want to just say thank you because the information that you gave today was awesome. Thank you, Patrice. I appreciate that. It's stuff that's helped me and I, I just have to, I file it away in my, um, my little starred bookmark folder to where this is like my survival tools. Um, so this, this is what, what, what I survive with every year, um, especially this you're moving into a new district, new staff, new ways to do things and um, then teaching from home. So it was, you know, kind of overwhelming for all of us. Oh, I got that snaps from Jacqueline. Thank you. Well, again, as you start navigating this, um, my information, my email address, um, I'll go ahead and type it into the chat. That'll make it easier for you to reach it. And I know this is a lot, so I sure don't mind um, helping you walk through it when you start your planning again. And I mean, it, it you know, you have to practice with it. You have to get in there and just um, work it and, and find out what works and what doesn't. And, you know, uh, you've got a large support system through the NISHI and through your leaders in the school. And um, a lot of this stuff, again, would be helpful, I know, to a lot of your other CTE programs or even some of your other core programs. Share it out there. I mean, hopefully it's going to be some assistance to some teachers. So with that, um, I, I can close unless there's any other questions and hand it back over to Nancy. And um, hopefully uh, okay, well, you guys wait, will... just, wait just a moment, I see David. David, when you said, um, are you going to send the link? Was that, did Katrina answer you there? Um, were you looking for that link that we identified was through California? Was that, is that the one you were referencing? Um, are, are you talking about me? Yeah, Ooh. William, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yes, yes, definitely. Yes, that, okay. that link. I like that link. And, and, and that, um, the one where you had the blood pressure, no, no need to the blood pressure and everything, is that more like virtual where they like can 
step-by-step process on, on how to take blood pressure? Yes. That, um, Do you the, remember that? Mm -hmm, uh, yeah, that was easyauscultation.com. Uh-huh. Easy. And, that, and then that, that link would be on there as well. All, of, all those will be on there, though, right? Yes, yes. It, it, all be, be in the PowerPoint, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah, I made okay. sure that I linked them up so y'all could go... Um, so y'all could go straight to them and okay. just copy and paste them over. Uh -huh. I think that's a that's a nice way of showing them students now, now mm -hmm. more than ever. Yeah, they, and they, they love getting in there and doing case yeah, studies. Yeah, they love doing and, it hands on. They like doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, with the yeah. times that's going on now, you know, it, uh, it'd be something they can do until we get back to that. Mm -hmm. Hands on. Literally. Yeah, you know. there's an app that I, I want to say they've made it um, online, but it used to be only um, Apple based. But I think they've they've uh -huh. opened it up to online now. That's called TouchSurgery.com, and uh -huh. you, your kids that want to go in and do some virtual surgeries, woo! Yeah, I know. That's no. that's a good one. So, that's a, I mean, so, you can go in there and do any kind of all these it, crazy surgeries. Can you do, I didn't see EKG, I didn't see, will it like all of those be on there or something? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Everything I clicked on is going to be on. Mm -hmm. You got it. And email me if there's something you don't remember seeing or what okay. was this thing you talked about. There's, and you know, there's a, uh, for EKG and stuff, the ACLS online has a really uh, good, couple of good tutorials. If you are going to move forward with EKG tech, email me and let me just take all your worries away because well, I have I, got some great, great stuff. I in have it. an EKG certification. All, all right. Good, so, good, good. I've, I've got some good student them. support stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Actually, I just wrote all, I rewrote all of my notes and then passed the EKG, so I just kind of kept them when I passed the certification. Mm -hmm. But I still would like to see more, you, you know, I'm Wait, telling you, just way. shoot me an email because I had to rewrite everything okay. and I had to do it and save it and find it. And I've got a couple of really good resources for you that it's okay. already done for you. That's better than what NHA was providing for me at the time. All right. Could you share, could you just share that information also with everybody? Uh, if I have it handy. I didn't have that in here. Um, let me see if I can pull it up by memory. Because when I change districts, um, I don't have the same bookmarks. So um, I'm looking for it though, real quick. If y'all wanna, if y'all have anything else to chat about, we'll see. E mm. Oh, 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 I think I remember it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I need to share my screen again. It's Akadoodle. I know it sounds ridiculous. I didn't know it. Um, all right. So I'm going to share my screen. All right. Here it is. I know that's the craziest name. Why they would do this. Um, Akadoodle. Okay. There's video courses. Um, you can go in and look at EKGs. It teaches you step by step by step by step about everything as if you are going through a textbook. Um, and then you give, um, uh, this tells you, uh, it goes through all the different, um, and it's got voice to it as well. So it's video and voice and it's animation and it's skills practice. Uh, so you can, it's going to give you different um, EKG interpretations that they can go through and practice with. Um, and it's got everything, everything. And, and there's two others that um, I can uh, email to um, Charnel or somebody else if they want to throw in a, um, if they want to throw in a, e an email for me to send the other two I have when I can go and log in through that, that pathway. So this one was acadoodle.com is for ECG um, learning and it's, it's a big help.
Thanks, Jacqueline. I need to take a little picture of that because I'm going to forget it. All right. Um, I have been um, eight. I have gone eight minutes over, and you are. Can I have... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I had one question. Um, I got disconnected earlier. This is Amanda McCluskey, and I was trying to do my um, last attendance. Do we know about Marsha when she left? Did anybody? Did anybody know her? I don't know her, but she said she had another meeting at three. Okay. Yeah. All right. So she was there. And she the she time. stayed on a little after three, so it, she may have left. Between okay. Three o five and three ten. Okay. Great. So, All right. And so the names that I have: Lee Newman, Patrice Gleaton, Jacqueline Hicks, Carolyn Scott, William Davis, David Downs, and Marsha Reese. That it. All right. Excellent. Thank you, ladies, so much for this great session. Um, I, we really appreciate you guys. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Glad to have been. We've, we've been, um, we've loved being a part of your professional development. And um, I'll let Nancy close with anything. Again, um, there's all of our, all three of our contact informations, if there's some um, information you'd like. And um, love to see some of you guys at the national conference, however that looks. So, and feel free to get in touch with us. Nancy, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Okay. Um, well, I'll get the recording and the PowerPoint over to you, uh, Amanda. And thank you for the opportunity to be with your teachers. And we look forward to ways that we can support them in the future. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Y'all go enjoy your